So previously we built this simple blog on our bakery store um, and clicking on the post takes us to a nicely formatted post. And in this video, I want to go over some more advanced features in Jekyll blogging and some other tips and tricks. So let's start off on our chocolate chip cookie blog post. And let's say we don't want the title in the file name, which at the moment is chocolate chip cookies. We want to specify another title. So we can just do this in front matter and override it. Like that. And we can do the same thing for the date. So let's publish this on New Year's Day. Now when I view the post, you can see the new title and date. In front matter, we can also control whether a blog post is published. So if we set this to published false, it's going to remove this post from the blog listing on my site. And this is just an easy way to pull down a post if you don't want it published right now. So now my blog list page only has one item. So I'll go ahead and remove that so it publishes the post again. And now I'll go over to my blog.html page. So this is the page that lists all my blog posts. And let's say in this example, I want it to not only show the page title, but also have a snippet of text which gives someone a wee hint of what's inside the blog post. So Jekyll makes um, the first paragraph in a blog post available to us using excerpt. So I can go post.excerpt. And now when I view the blog list page, I get the first paragraph of each blog post printed out on that page. But what if we want more? What if we want to control exactly what is in this excerpt? So we can do this by using an excerpt separator. And how this works is we can specify a sequence of characters which indicates the end of the excerpt. So I'll add a few paragraphs of text here. And then we'll specify our excerpt separator. Now our excerpt has two paragraphs. And if we click on the post, you'll see that content is in the blog post itself. And if we didn't want this, it would make sense to specify the snippet of text in front matter rather than in the body as an excerpt. Next, we'll look at categories. So categories are a way of organizing blog posts into groups. And we can specify the categories this post is in in the front matter. So I'll put this post in the cookies category and the baking category. And on my sourdough post, I'll just put it in the baking category. One thing to note is by putting this in a category, it actually changes the default URL for this post. So now the URL will be prefixed with slash baking. Well, I'll go over to my blog page. And now in addition to listing all my blog posts, I want to list the different categories and the blog posts inside those categories. So I'll copy my UL here. And Jekyll makes the categories available to us at site.categories. Uh, so that's an array of all the categories on our site. So I'll loop over those. And first I'll output an H3, which has the category name in it. This category variable here is actually an array itself, and it has two items. The first item in the array is the name of the category. The second item is a list of blog posts in that category. So I'll show you how you can use this. So we'll get the first item, which is the item at index zero, um, and that, again, is the name of this category. And 
Then we want to loop over the posts in that category. So instead of site.posts, we want category one or the second item in category. We'll also get rid of the excerpt. So now at the top of the page, we have our blog listing as before, and we also have the listing of the categories here. So cookies has one item in it, baking has two items. Jekyll also has a concept of tags, which behave in a similar way to categories. So here we'll give it a tag of bread, and then we could access all the tags on our site at site.tags, and we could iterate over this just like we did the categories. So the main difference between categories and tags is one, by default categories will add the category to the URL, whereas tags will not, and two, when we get into doing permalinks, which are a way of customizing the URL, we can use categories in the URL, however we can't use tags. So I'll just get rid of that. And we'll move on to our final topic, which is post URL. So when we're linking to a particular blog post, if that permalink changes, then that link will no longer work. And we can fix this with post URL. And let me show you an example. So on the blog page, we'll add a new link right to the top of the page inside a paragraph, and we'll link to the sourdough blog post. And I'll just paste in the link here. So now I have this link at the top of the page, and clicking that takes me to the sourdough bread page. But now let's say I add another category to my sourdough bread page, um, which is going to change the URL. And now when I click on that link, I get a 404 because it can no longer find that page. So we can get around this by using post URL. So I'll replace this URL, and I'm going to use tag markup here, and inside call post underscore URL. And then I'll give it the name of my post without the extension. So here we've got 2016-04-04-sourdough-bread. One thing that's unusual about this is I would expect to use the output tags rather than the logic liquid tags. Um, I'm not sure why this is, but it seems to work this way. So now when we view this link, it takes us to the correct page. And if we add another category here, the link continues to work even though the URL has changed. This tutorial was brought to you by CloudCanon, the cloud content management system for Jekyll. For more free tutorials like this one, check out learn.cloudcanon.com.